Hello and welcome to another episode of my Corrado conversion. Once again, this isn't a Corrado. Before I fit it into the Corrado, I'm going to take the head off, make sure that's all good, make sure there's no excessive wear and tear. Having 215,000 miles on it, there's a good chance a lot of the intake and maybe the valves have coked up with the soot from EGR. There could be some cam failure even though the car does actually drive all right and there's no rattling noises there's no loss of power and i actually started taking it apart late last night started stripping this down late last night and realised I didn't have enough tools with me to get the head off. I could actually see quite an excessive bit of, of intake dirt in there, and a little bit of damp oil, hopefully from the breather. So that's a good sign that this inlet's never been off and cleaned. Initial inspection of the camshaft looks in good condition, they've got a tendency to wear the cam lobes out, particularly round three and four, that's normally the last place the oil gets to. Overall initially it just looks like a fairly standard engine, so I'm going to continue to strip this down and see what we find inside. Now I've pulled the head off, I'm going to port and polish to help improve the flow or the breathing of the engine. Not necessary to get more power, but it would help. Going back to the good old days of the basic principles of engine breathing and the consumption of air and velocity of air. Now every modified car just gets a remap and it's done. Now this is going to be on par with a stage one head, I think. I'm removing the flashing and the casting marks and not going too far taking material off or changing the flow characteristics or changing the valve size. Because the TDI heads have a massive amount of development in the factory to the swirl of the intake into the piston bowl and I'm just trying to improve where the manufacturing process can't really put the effort in to a mass produced part and trying to achieve the greater efficiency and ultimately help miles per gallon. I've had to really cut down and speed up this video as it was over three hours long of footage. So I'll try and run through the bits I've used, call this drill when it was charged. Diagrams would be far better with my little compression struggles or pumping up the tyre. So that was a no-no. It's not the ultimate guide to doing headwork, but there may be many styles and finishes for both turbo and naturally aspirated engines. To so if you think of doing it yourself, do the research to see what's best for you. I've been using this kit from a company called Demon Tweaks many years ago. I'll leave a link in the description below to the equivalent kit that they sell today. I think it, it looks like it's got a lot better. As I said, mine looks well used. I might have done four or five heads. Used various grades. These little bits of essentially sandpaper on a reel which then goes into a countersunk drill bit with a bit of a spindle on it so it self tightens and some of the work that I've done at the end was using this flat, flat wheel unfortunately on that kit you only got one flat wheel that went into the it won't come out now will it but anyway that's that's a screw head with a quite a high grade flat wheel I think it's either it's about 200 put it in engine oil to help take off some of the the swirl marks that I've created with sandpaper just to smooth out various sections it's quite an interesting thing I wouldn't mind getting some more of those so it started raining here so it's about time to get into the shed and see what I can do oh one last thing was also using 
some wire wheels nice little cheap set of wire wheels because I only need a small small set that's more or less on the outside you can't get anything in there a little small brush one can actually get into the the inlet tracks and the exhaust tracks that helps take off some of the carbon beforehand one thing I did actually use right at the very beginning was oven cleaner I put an oven cleaner to help decarbonate everything and actually wipe that down with a cloth after a small set of wire wheels to help clean in the little sections that's got a little bit of a pointing particularly on the TDI head where the swirl comes around it's very hard to get anything in there so that worked quite well so I'm going to get into the shed to see what I can do see if I make any improvements it stopped raining it's going to rain later quite murky and rusty in there looks like the turbo may have never been off they're going to be fun to get off Let's see how much is in the intake wow There's minor scoring starting on those, so I may just put some buckets in. I am going to inspect the camshaft a little bit later on. Let's have a look at what the internal cylinders look like. Let's grab a torch. I can get to work. As you can see, and that's fairly coked up. That's an inlet and exhaust. Now to remove the valves, they're secured in with these little collets. Can get all sorts of tools to, to help remove. It is always good when you come to fit them by compressing the spring and removing. I always like to use the old faithful spark plug socket, the large one. It's fairly redundant nowadays. And a small tapping hammer. There's one of the little cuts. One spring, two spring, twin springs set up one side the other, different compression rates will stop the valve, uh, the top from floating instead of just one spring pushing it back, you've got two at two different rates. First thing I'm going to do is make sure all the extra little bits of carbon are taken off before putting any sandpaper flat wheels in there. Don't want it clogging up.
can get to debris out. And if you've got access to a little airline, give it a little blow out. end just to take the edge of this lip off just to smooth that one up on this head we've got noticeable on the intake it's just a little bit smoother but there's still a little bit of a lip there get into some of the little nooks and crannies. Because I've done the valves and groups, I've repeated the same stages in all of them. So all of them are identical and not touched in the identical same place. so far see all the ridges still in there and there where the casting marks are heads are normally cast into two halves more complex may even be three That's looking a little bit tidier. It's not completely finished yet. That's just going to lubricate it nicely. We're getting rid of those coarse marks that we've got rid.
can actually see oil and a little bit of aluminium in there so it's just cleaning up all the debris now it's also using that as a grinding paste Another task is to clean up the side of the head. See where this flange goes on? It's a water jacket in there. Of course, there's been a little bit of seepage through. two in the morning just finished doing the cylinder head putting a polish on a really basic level I hope you've enjoyed watching this rather tedious boring long time consuming job which realistically once the heads back on and everything's bolted back up you're never gonna see it again hopefully